So the idea of a story from the motherfish came from wanting to uh, tell a story about the impact of microplastics uh, in modern times, but also to put that into a historical perspective. To look back at the history, evolution and adaptation of fish over 400 million years or so, to see that they have survived all of these mass extinctions through different adaptations. But then to ask the question, well, what happens next? And what did the science tell us? I like to really embrace, like, the, just being outside, I think that's what I love about the beach, and the serenity of it. Well, I mean, I spent a lot of my childhood at the beach. Um, we'd always go down for like holidays and stuff. And like for me, it's a bit of like a happy place. For me, the, the beach is that place where the, the land meets the ocean and it meets the sky. So you've got this interconnection of these three totally different ecosystems. And it's this thing where you can, as you look out towards the ocean, it's almost like you're looking toward infinity. I really enjoy just exploring and seeing the different kinds of things that wash up and how different they can be on one really small area of beach. Even a beautiful beach like Henley Beach looks pristine and clean as um, underneath the surface that you, we went for a beach clean. We all came back with bits and pieces of plastic that you just would never have known were there. And so I traditionally get a lot of cigarette butts. I get a lot of um, microplastics, which is the small bits of plastic, um, and I also get a lot of um, litter from takeaway containers, that sort of thing, wrappers, that type of thing. To be honest, I feel kind of a bit lost because we're trying our hardest to get that word out to spread it, but unfortunately not enough change is happening. It's a bit scary to hear that like everyone talk about like how pollution is like ruining the planet, because like I know like I've still you know I've still got a long time to live and like what if what if the end of the world like literally happens while I'm still alive. Well the problem of microplastics um, I believe is pretty much a global problem. Um, they found microplastics in the seas and the ice in Antarctica and in the Arctic and it's on every beach um, in every river um, all over the world so it's a huge global problem and it's a problem that's really difficult to fix. It's interesting to look back on a 400 million year history of fish um, and to see all the varied and wonderful things that they've evolved into, but we are facing a great threat now with things like microplastics and climate change, acidification of the ocean, um, and it's a real threat to the biodiversity that we have. And this being a, a human-made uh, extinction event, probably is is something the planet hasn't seen before. Art and science collaborations that involve the community are a great way of telling and sharing those stories by the community for the community. They help engage us to better understand issues of the day. They get a spark. Somewhere along the line each one of them get a spark and they take off. Some take off straight away, others take a bit longer and you try to give them encouragement to keep going and then all of a sudden they've, they're hooked on it. They find some, some bizarre piece of rubbish and it works. And uh, when you've got them, you feed them. And then they self-motivate. You can then go on to someone else. One thing you learn is everybody's got a different appreciation of what they think is good and what they don't. And you can't necessarily challenge that. I don't feel the need to. So I think using those plastic bottle lids is kind of like a reflection on um, the, our plastic footprint, on, especially in our oceans. And so anything art is interesting to me, and especially the whole concept of, you know, the waste uh, that ends up in our ocean. And this uh, animal that I've worked with today is an extinct fish called a placoderm, um, and affectionately known as a mother fish. And so I love that I found a peg and a spoon to represent a bit of motherhood. I really, really enjoyed uh, the workshop, so being able to look through all of the rubbish and the plastics and the microplastics that all different people from the community brought together, it really made me see the kinds of things that we all use and to be able to look at something but not see it as litter. So the artworks that we created, I think were giving the plastics a new life. For me, it's been watching um, ordinary members of the community uh, 
get together and create art. Now the art's not by any means perfect, but that's not the point. The point is getting people to learn the stories of fish and adaptation, to listen to the scientists, and then giving them the opportunity to, I guess, create what they think from there. So the artworks, I suppose, is um, it's not to celebrate the plastic detritus, but I think it's to try and use art to get the story across to people to say, this is all single-use crap. Well, there's so much more awareness now. Uh, as a child, I was completely unaware with what was going on with the environment. I think the recent actions, such as the climate, tra um, climate change, school strike, etc., has made me a bit hopeful that maybe um, if we speak up enough that something can be done and we can reverse um, this cycle. I am given hope by seeing active communities and members of the community banding together to uh, educate others and to act on the local environment to try and improve the situation. What gives me hope is when I take kids down to the beach or I show the students in the centre, the animals in the aquariums and the, the wonder in their eyes when they do experience these animals and these ecosystems when they are pristine and they are healthy. Well, the fact that people are willing to do this gives us hope. The fact that people do adopt a spot and uh, take on the responsibility. So that like that gives me a lot of hope to think that maybe there is a way that we can fix this. Maybe if we do stop using plastics, if we you know recycle properly, um, you know if we can cut down the use of like cut down the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, then like maybe there is a hope that Earth will come out of this. It's been really interesting to, to have a look at what others have created in response to the plastic pollution and the science and stuff, and to then to create music based on that art, all the while being cognizant myself of what's involved in the science. So it's this thing of get the science, create some art, get some more science and then create some art from that art. So it's been this really interesting collaborative tangential process. And we were looking at what they were created and I started thinking to myself, well, what if, what, what kind of image does it create if all of these plastic uh, fish they've created, what if they were the things or represented the things that are then swimming in the sea? Because we know microplastics are getting into all the fish. And then the question is like, well, come down to the seaside folks because this this is the seaside that we as humans are creating and have created well yeah definitely um this song does have like an evil undertone to it so it's really trying to show like the harmfulness and the badness of the plastic in the ocean and in a way it makes me feel like this kind of monster in the sea like the plastic i guess so it's really fun to try and bring that while singing um, also capturing that message at the same time come down to the seaside we'll watch the synthetic waves flow come down to the seaside and into the ocean we'll go whispers in the night was a song that i wrote um, as, a, as a teenager and it was written at a time when I felt threatened by the possibility of nuclear annihilation but clearly many years ago and it's a song that's sat in my cupboard for all these years and as we were working on the story of the mother fish um, it became clear that some of the narrative from some of the younger folk uh, from the community um, were, were feeling similar kinds of things and so 
the idea of having this song, which is a song of hope, um, written by young Michael, sung and performed by a person of uh, the current generation, um, seemed to make sense and seemed to fit quite nicely um, with how we wanted to, I guess, finish up with the project, that, that there is hope. Searching through the emptiness, I see a world consumed with pain. Sitting on my own, I cry because it all seems so in vain. This song speaks to me in many ways. Um, it's almost sad to think that Michael could write this song when he was just 17 and I can sing it now and it's still so relevant. I just love the idea that Gemma's singing it at the same age that I wrote it. And, and it really is a reminder of where we've come from and who we all are. The lyrics in this song are really beautiful. They have a message that really resonates with me. We're really good at getting things done when we do them together and we take collective action. It gives me a lot of hope to think that we're not alone and that there is a way to fix this. I want people to take a couple of things away from the project. One, of course, is, is hope, is that we do have the capacity, we, we've got the technology, we've got the science, we know what to do to fix all this. It's just a question of us gathering together as a community. And I think that's the thing. What do we then do as a community to gather together? So what I would like is to see more and more people look at how they reduce their plastics, how they eliminate single-use plastics, how they take responsibility for their own actions, um, and I guess how they can then tell stories and share stories.